Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. In the previous lecture, we have studied the concept of Karaka and we also looked at the various definitions of Karaka and the six Karakas. We highlighted the fact that there are only six Karakas and there are seven Vibhaktis. Karaka is a concept that describes the relations between the meanings. So, it is still part of the meanings. We use the technical term Arthakasha for this and Vibhakti is the part of the Shabdakasha, that is what we have said so far. So, we continue in this lecture to explain further the relation between Karaka and Vibhakti and how Abhidhana takes place, notably what is the section in the Ashtadhyayi and what are the sutras which talk about the expression of the unexpressed expression by the sups, unexpressed by the thing. We shall deal with this important aspect in this particular lecture. First of all, let us deal with the question what happens to the abhihita karaka, the karaka that is expressed. We have seen that there are three types of constructions that are possible in Sanskrit, kartruvachya, karmavachya and bhavavachya. And in all these we noted that kartruvachya means when the thing expresses or denotes karta and then remaining karakas remain unexpressed. In order to express these unexpressed karakas, we use sups and then we listed down the numbers of the sup triplets to express a particular karaka. Similarly, in the karma vachya, we noted that the thing expresses the karaka karma, so remaining all karakas remain unexpressed. And now we use specific sub triplets to express those unexpressed karakas. And in bhavavachya, when the thing expresses bhava, all karakas they remain unexpressed, and we use the sups to express those unexpressed karakas. Now, what happens to the karaka that is abhihita or expressed? That is a very pertinent question in this regard. Let us try to figure out using the traditional sources the answer to this question. So, the entity whose role, whose karaka gets expressed by thing does not require any other word to express its role once again. And so, this pratipadika is added the first triplet of sup namely prathama after it and this prathama and the thing they can be said to be correlated or can be said to be bound in this particular sense. So, we do not need a, to add a sup to a pratipadika whose role is already expressed by the thing, but we have to add a sup to a pratipadika in order to make it a pada fit to be used in a sentence and that sup is prathama. This is what happens to the abhihita karaka. If we look at the examples that we have seen, devadattaha, 
प्रयागात कार्तिक मासे काशीम गच्छति सो गच्छति इज द वर्ब विच हैज अ थिंग विच एक्सप्रेसेस करता सो देवदत्त प्लेइंग द रोल ऑफ करता एंड द रोल ऑफ देवदत्त इज ऑलरेडी एक्सप्रेस बाय थिंग एंड सो नाउ वी डोंट नीड एनी वर्ड टू एक्सप्रेस द रोल ऑफ देवदत्त बट वी एड प्रथमा आफ्टर इट टू गिव इट द स्टेटस ऑफ पद दिस इज वॉट हैपन्स टू द अभिहित कारक बी इट इन कर्तृवाच्य और बी इट इन कर्मवाच्य प्रथमा इज एडेड टू दैट प्रातिपदिक हुज रोल इन रिलेशन विद द एक्शन डिनोटेड बाय द वर्बल रूट इज ऑलरेडी एक्सप्रेस बाय द थिंग दैट इज एडेड आफ्टर दैट वर्बल रूट Apart from thing, the next question is, who else does the abhidhana? Is it only thing that can do the abhidhana of the karaka, the expression of the karaka? Is it only thing that can denote the karaka? Or is there any other verbal element which also has the capacity to denote the karakas? and the tradition says abhidhanam cha prayan tinkrut tadhita samasaihi generally the abhidhana happens by thing or krut or tadhita suffix or the process of compounding samas the expression of the karaka is made mainly by thing krut tadhita and samas let us take examples to illustrate these points abhidhana by thing we have already seen let us now look at the krut suffix doing the abhidhana abhidhana by a krut let us take the sentence maya gatam gramam pashyati he or she sees the village that is being reached by me so somebody is seeing the village that i have reached that's the meaning of the sentence and here we have the verb pashyati but we are right now not looking at pashyati we are looking at gatam in which the verbal root is gama and the suffix is ta this ta is indicating karma the verbal root gama denotes the action of going and so now this grama this village is what is being reached so now this the suffix which means karma therefore now myself aham so ta is a krut first of all stated by 32102 this ta means karma in accordance with 3470 since ta expresses karma the karta which is asmad here first person pronoun this remains unexpressed and so the third tr sub triplet which is trutiya is used to express this karta and that's why asmad becomes maya in the instrumental singular so krut is expressing karma and so the karaka that is unexpressed in the relation to the action of going that is asmad takes trutiya and we shall see the rules which prescribe such a trutiya but the point is that ta here expresses karma the abhidhana of karma is happened here because of the krut suffix ta similarly if you have a sentence like gramam gatavantam mam pashyati he see he she sees me who has reached the village in this sentence we have the word gatavantam here we have gama the verbal root and the suffix tavat added to it gama means the action of going tavat means karta one who has reached one who has gone tavat is also a krut suffix stated by 32102 and tavat means karta in accordance with 3467 and now since tavat expresses karta karma which is grama over here remains unexpressed and so second triplet of sub namely dvitiya 
is used to express the role of grama which is karma and therefore you see gramam vitiya gatavantam mam pashyati ok. So, gramam vitiya is because of its role karma being unexpressed by the krit over here in gatavantam. Now, there are various other karakas which can also be expressed by krit suffixes. Let us now look at some other important karakas being expressed by krit suffixes. Karta and karma we have already seen. Now, let us look at the other four karakas and here are some examples. First, let us look at how karana gets expressed by a krit. So, here is an example snaniyam churnam a soap powder which is the most effective means for bathing. The verbal root is na to which is added the suffix aniya by 3196 tavyat and so we get the word snaniya. This aniya means karana by krityalyuta bahulam and so now this aniya expresses karana. The next example is daniyas chhatraha a student who is a recipient of donation. In this case once again the verbal root da means to give and aniya once again means karana sampradana because of krutya luta bahulam. Then we have the apadana karaka being expressed by a suffix krit suffix ma which is added to the verbal root bhi. Bhi is the verbal root which means to be afraid of, to be scared and ma indicates apadana. So, the word bhima means on whom people are afraid of. And lastly, we have example where adhikarana karaka is expressed by the krit suffix in the example godohani sthali. So, the suffix is ana, the verbal root is duha and godohani sthali means a vessel in which cow is milked. So, this ana stands for adhikarana. And so, adhikarana karaka gets expressed by the krit suffix. This is how krit suffixes express karakas. Now, let us look at the example where a taddita suffix is expressing the karaka. The example is shatyaha. What it means is shatena kritaha, one who is bought by 100 of something. Prescribed by the sutra 5121, shatacha. So, if we have the meaning 100 and bought by where 100 acts as the instrument of the buying. So, we have shata and the suffix yat which is added to it which is a taddita suffix. Now, this yat stands for bought by. So, karma is being expressed over here. So, the suffix here expresses karma and remaining karakas are unexpressed. So, shatyaha that is the word which has the taddita suffix here which expresses karma karaka something that is bought for something that is bought by 100 rupees. Then we have abhidhana by a samasa by a compound and the example is praptanandaha praptaha anandaha yam gramam saha the village where happiness has reached. Now, the process of compounding here expresses the karta the remaining karakas are unexpressed. So, the karma which is grama gets the second triplet of sup vitiya added to it to express the karma. This is how the samasa expresses the karaka in this case karma karma karaka. Now, let us study the sutras which prescribe the sub triplets in order to express the unexpressed karakas. So, the first sutra in this section is 231 anabhihite. The meaning of anabhihite is when not expressed, that is the literal meaning, when not expressed by, not expressed by a thing primarily. So, this acts as a general condition 
throughout the entire 2.3. This condition continues in subsequent sutras. So the subsequent sutras they will take anavihite as a condition. So when a particular karaka is not expressed then not expressed by a thing primarily then you add the respective subtriplet to express it. Let us take the example 232 karmani dvitiya and anavihite continues. What it means is when karma is anavihita, when karma is unexpressed, the second triplet of sub namely dvitiya is added after a paratipatika when its role of an object is unexpressed. So we have the example gramam gachati ramaha. Gramam gachati ramaha. Here T which is a thing expresses karta, Rama is the karta. The action described here is that of going, Rama is kartru, Grama is karma. T expresses karta, so karma is unexpressed by this T and therefore 232 applies. This karma, the role of Grama is unexpressed, anavihite and therefore we add the second subtriplet and make it Gramam. Then we have Chaturthi Sampradane. The fourth triplet of sup, namely Chaturthi, is added after Apratipadika when its role of the recipient, namely Sampradana, is unexpressed. So Deva Poojanaya Gramam Gachati Ramaha. Let us take this sentence. In this sentence, the meaning is Rama goes to a village to worship the deities. So T expresses Kartru, which is Rama. And Sampradana is unexpressed by it. So 2313 applies and Deva Poojana, which is a Sampradana, this gets Chaturthi, the fourth sub triplet. This is what is the meaning of Chaturthi Sampradani. Then we have Kartru Karanayos Tritiya 2318. What this means is the third triplet of sub namely Tritiya is added after a Pratipatika when the roles of Kartru and Karana are unexpressed. For example, Ramena, Yanena, Gamyate, Gramaha. In this sentence, the meaning is a village is being reached by Rama by a vehicle. So, Rama is the Karta, Grama is the Karma and Yana is the Karana. Te here expresses karma. So, Kartru and Karana are unexpressed by it and so 2318 applies. It adds the third triplet after Rama and Yana to give us the forms Ramena and Yanena. This is the meaning of 2318. Then we have Apadane Panchami. 2328. What it means is the fifth triplet of sup, namely Panchami, is added after a Pratipadika when the role of Apadana is unexpressed, Anavihite. The example is Rama Prayagat Kashim Gachati. Ram goes to Kashi from Prayaga. Now, in this case, T expresses Kartru. Apadana is unexpressed by it, so 2328 applies and we add the fifth case and make it Prayagat. T is expressing Karta and Rama is the Karta, therefore Rama takes the Prathama Vibhakti, the first case. Then we have Saptam Yadhikaranecha 2336 expressing the Adhikarana Karaka. This sutra means and the seventh triplet of Sup. Saptami is added after a Pratipadika when the role of Adhikarana is unexpressed, Anavihite. The example is Ramaha Kartika Mase Kashim Gachati. Ram goes to Kashi in the month of Kartika. So, in this case, T expresses Kartru. Adhikarana is unexpressed by it. So, 2336 applies 
and we add the Saptami, the seventh subtriplet after the word Kartika Masa and it becomes Kartika Masa. Rama is the Karta whose role is expressed by Ti, therefore it takes Prathama. Now let us study the meaning of Prathama given by 2346. The sutra is Pratipadikartha Linga Parimana Vachana Matre Prathama. What this means is the first triplet of Sup, namely Prathama, is added after a Pratipadika when its role is expressed in the sense of the meaning of that Pratipadika, gender, measurement and number of that Pratipadika. So we have two examples over here. Gramam Gachati Ramaha, Ram goes to a village and Ramena Gramyate Gamaha, a village is being reached by Rama. In both the sentences, the action described here is that of going. The verbal root is Gama. Rama in both the sentences is the Karta. Grama in both the sentences is Karma. In the first sentence, Gramam Gachati Ramaha, T expresses Kartru. Rama is the Kartru. So the role of Rama is expressed by this T thing. And so other Karakas, namely the Karma over here is unexpressed. So we add Dvitiya, second sub triplet following 8232. Two. And so Gramam comes in. Now this T has expressed the role of Karta. Rama is the Karta. So now we add the Prathama after Rama, the meaning of this Prathama is not any Karaka, but rather the meaning of the Pratipadika itself, as well as the gender, number, etc. So the meaning of the Pratipadika is the meaning of this Prathama and nothing else. It does not convey any Karaka role the Ram plays in this particular action of going. Similarly, in the second sentence, which is Ramena Gramyate Gramaha. In this sentence, the action of going is what is described. Rama is playing the role of Karta. Grama is playing the role of Karma. Now, this Te, verbal suffix, thing, Te, expresses Karma, the role that is played by Grama. So now the role played by Rama, which is Karta, remains unexpressed. And in order to express it, Following 2318, we apply the third sub triplet and we make it Ramena. Ramena Gramyate Gramaha. And now we add Prathama after Grama, whose role of being a karma is already expressed by this Te. Now, this Grama is added the Prathama Vibhakti, the first sub triplet. And the meaning of this Prathama Vibhakti is no Karaka, its meaning is Pratipadikartha, the same as Grama or Linga or Parimana or Vachana. In this case, it is only Pratipadikartha, the meaning of the Pratipadika Grama. Even in this case, the meaning is only Pratipadikartha, the meaning of Rama. So, in both these cases, the Pratipadika here means Rama, the Pratipadika over here means Grama. Now the Pratyaya, Prathama, over here and over here means Rama and Grama respectively. There is no difference between the meanings of the Prakriti and the Pratyaya in this case. This is something very peculiar as far as the Paninian grammar is concerned. The Prathama Vibhakti means Pratipadikartha only. It does not mean any Karaka according to this scheme. However, we have already seen that this Rama and this Ti, they are bound, they are interlinked, they are interconnected. So this Ti expresses the Karaka, the role and that role is played exactly by this Rama. Te expresses a Karaka role and this is expressed, this is the role played by Grama. So there is this connection between Te and Grama, Ti and Rama. So therefore, according to some later grammarians, through this Ti, Rama, this Prathama can also be called a Karaka Vibhakti. Otherwise, going by the wording of the Sutra in the Ashtadhyayi, 
Prathama is not considered as the Karaka Vibhakti. The Vartika Abhihite Prathama which says that when a particular Karaka gets Abhihita, gets expressed, the Pratipadika whose role is expressed by this thing gets Prathama added to it. And so through this thing Prathama can also be considered as Karaka Vibhakti that is what later Paninian grammatical tradition says. This is the meaning of Prathama according to this Sutra 2.3.46. So we have now seen what is the purpose of adding second subtriplet, Dvitiya, third, Tritiya, fourth, Chaturthi, fifth, Panchami, seventh, Saptami. We also studied the meaning of Prathama. The second subtriplet expresses karma which is unexpressed by thing. The third subtriplet trutiya expresses karta and karana which is unexpressed by thing. The fourth subtriplet expresses sampradana which is unexpressed by thing. The fifth subtriplet panchami expresses apadana which is unexpressed by the thing. The seventh subtriplet saptami expresses adhikarana which is not expressed by the thing. And we also saw that whenever all these Karakas are expressed, we add Prathama Vibhakti to that Pratipadika whose role is expressed. Is this all or is there something that remains to be explained? Yes, there is something that remains to be explained. What happens to the sixth triplet of the sup? What happens to Shashti? Shashti is the sixth triplet of sup, suffixes. Now we have a rule, Sutra 2350, which says Shashti Sheshe. It means that Shashti Vibhakti is added to a Pratipadika to denote remaining relations, remaining meaning other than Karaka relations. So it is clear that Shashti does not denote any Karaka in conjunction with the thing. This is more important. I repeat, Shashti does not denote any Karaka in conjunction with the thing. Shashti does not denote any Karaka in conjunction with the thing. There in the in conjunction with the thing, it denotes relation between meanings of the Pratipadika. For example, son of Dasharatha stays. If this is the meaning, then you have Dasharathasya Putraha Tishthati. So now Dasharatha Sya and Putraha, here Sya which is Shashti denotes the relation between the meanings of Dasharatha and Putra. And what is that relation? Ancestor descendant relation, Janya Janaka Bhava relation. Dasharatha is the Janaka, Putra is the Janya, Dasharatha is the father, Putra is the son. This Janya Janaka Bhava is expressed by this Sya. There is this thing which expresses Kartrukaraka, which is nothing but this Putra. So this Sya is not related with this Ti and not related with the, any of the Karakas. So Shashti does not express any Karaka when in conjunction with the thing. What happens when Shashti is used in conjunction with the Krit? In conjunction with the Krit suffix though, Shashti can express or denote either Kartru Karaka or Karma Karaka. This is stated by the Sutra Kartru Karmano Kriti 2365. And here are two examples Jagata Karta Krishnaha, Krishna is the creator of the world, and Krishnasya Kritihi, the action of Krishna. In the first sentence, Jagata Karta Krishnaha, we have the word Karta in which there is a suffix trach and we have karta which is a kridanta word with reference to it jagat is karma krishna is the karta and here so the anavihita karaka which is karma gets shashti jagataha this is the shashti of jagat jagatak karta krishnaha in case of Krishna's Kritihi, Kriti is the word 
which is derived by adding the krit suffix t to the verbal root kru. T means bhava. So now Krishna who is karta of this action, its role is unexpressed. So in order to express it, now we can use shashti because this is the krit suffix. And so we have the sentence krishnasya kritihi, although incomplete, but in this case krishnasya kritihi consists of a shashti of the pratipadika krishna expressing the role of krishna which is that of karta. This is how shashti vibhakti expresses the karta and karma karaka when in conjunction with a krit suffix. In this case karta and kriti having the krit suffix as trich and ti. To summarize what we have seen so far, karaka and vibhakti form the core of sentence structure in Sanskrit and in Sanskrit grammar. We have studied in detail the Paninian grammar in this regard, same more or less same is the case with the non-Paninian grammar. What we can say about the treatment of this of these two terms is that the treatment of these two core terms in the Paninian grammar is unique and seems to have been followed more or less in other non-Paninian grammars as well with some modifications here and there. The explanations of these core terms is evolving even today which is evident from the definition of karaka given as shakti buddhi and the tradition considers for accommodating usages by these new interpretations available. This is the explanation of karaka and vibhakti in detail and now we shall proceed to understand some other technical terms used in Paninian grammar through some other Saudhnya sutras. Thank you for your attention.